So the environmental toxin I'm going to be talking about today is called a brevitoxin. It creates something in fish that are like these little lesions right here. It is a naturally produced toxin, and it's produced by the species of dinoflagellates or algae called Carinus brevis. It's a, nitro, it's a neurotoxin that binds to sodium channels and nerve cells. It's tasteless, odorless, heat and acid stable, and lipid soluble. It leads to the illness called neurotoxic shellfish poisoning, and the brevitoxins are toxic to fish, marine mammals, birds, and humans, but not to shellfish. So that's how they spread to humans because the dinoflagellates inflect the muscles or shellfish, which humans consume, and in high doses, it does lead to the neurotoxic shellfish poisoning. How can you tell if the seawater is toxic or affected with these algae blooms? They're called red tides, as you can see in the waters here, it creates kind of a red or orange pigment. These, ha these harmful algae blooms are mostly in the northeastern coast of the United States. However, recently they have been found in upwards of Canada, Florida, and on the southern coast of California. Harmful algae blooms mostly in the north. However, these dinoflagellates we produce this chemical, such as the brevitoxin, they act as a neurotoxin in other animals. It's caused by an increase in nutrients that algae need from farm runoff. Algae life. The surface of waters of these blooms usually have about 1 to 20 million cells per liter. The toxins result in fish kills and mortality of other marine organisms. Neurotoxin is released by exocytosis upon exposure to blue light. When the algae bloom, they release these brevitoxins into the water and the air. It leads to fish and marine mammal death as well as irritation of the respiratory tract in humans. If you're on a beach during these red tides, you can actually experience symptoms of asthma or bronchitis. Um, also causes shellfish poisoning in humans due to the concentrations of toxins in shellfish eaten by humans from red tide, red tide locations. These, um, these red tide events are on the Saracosa County and it led to thousands of marine life death. I think also there was a whale in one of these. Mm. Red tide impacts are toxic to marine life. It accumulates in clams, mussels, scallops, fish, and mammals death to some species, human poisoning after consumption, and the symptoms occur within 30 minutes. You start to feel cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, such as food poisoning. But then 15 minutes after this, you feel tingling in your limbs, memory loss, paralysis, asthma, and then heart attack if untreated. God, terrible. Um, pets, so dogs and red tide. Red tides release toxins into the air, which humans can wear masks if they need to go to the beach. But during red tides, dogs can get very ill. However, it's very rare, and dogs, it has been seen that dogs are sensitive to the brevitoxin exposure. Red tide toxins get into the bloodstream of dogs. It was first documented in 2003. However, it's still unknown what causes dogs to be affected, either swimming in the water, eating dead mammals on the, uh, that were uh, attacked by this disease, or breathing in the toxins. But, I think it was mainly when they found these dogs, they thought they were regular poisons, not the brevet poison. Mm. So they were treating them for, like if they had just been eating something bad, not for this brevet toxin specifically. So they were giving them IVs instead, which were not helping. So the signs of toxic exposure include excessive drooling, which you can see in this picture, vomiting, lethargy, or reluctancy to move, decreased appetite, weakness in any limb, or inability to hold up their head, body tremors, seizure, and other abnormal neurological signs, respiratory difficulty. Pets become disoriented and begin to stumble as a drunk, throwing up, whining, thrashing, paralysis, blindness, then seizures if untreated. Symptoms will reoccur and the toxin will become more potent if not treated specifically for brevitoxin. So they were, veterinarians were using treatments of fluid and IVs. The dogs would look better, they test normal, They'd go home within 10 hours, they would be sick again, they'd be blind, creating seizures, and they'd have to come back in for another treatment. And it wasn't until 2003 that they found it was brevitoxin in the bloodstreams, and they, veterinarians had went back through their notes and their cases, and they found out they were mistreating hundreds of pets for this toxin. They're, so they said they were cleared. When they went home, they were released, and they had to return to the hospital within the next 24 hours. They found out the best known treatment 
was to dehydrate them for 24 hours, administer diuretics, and monitor the kidneys to help flush out all the toxins. The main thing is to not allow pets on the beach during red tide events because we don't know what specifically affects them, if it's swimming, eating, or just breathing in the respiratory system. So this is the neurotoxic shellfish poisoning in humans, which we are eating clams, mussels, and oysters, not knowing where they came from or if they came from a red tide event, and then from the tingling, numbness, dizziness from eating these, which occurs within 30 minutes. How do you avoid the toxic shellfish poisoning? Do not swim in red tides. Do not consume shellfish from these areas. Do not go fishing where it says danger. Toxic shellfish poisoning is known here. Buy self shellfish from licensed seafood shops. Make sure to remove the viscera, the gonads, and roe before cooking. And when you're eating shellfish, make sure to eat small amounts because even one oyster or shellfish can contain amount of toxins to kill an adult human. And seek medical advice if symptoms occur after consuming shellfish. And then I posted um, the health department of what they have to look for in the toxin. They basically tell you that there's no way to tell if your shellfish is toxic or has this burby poison. So no matter like these like fables, like, oh, I can test it if I use a globe of garlic to see if it turns black and now I know it's toxic, it doesn't, it's not true. Or there's any type of methods you see, like a single shellfish will occasionally contain enough poison to kill an adult, so you can't do it one test it, because it might actually kill you. It might be the end. And if you have, the single dose doesn't have the symptoms, but five could. So they tell you that's not a good testing method. There is no testing method. You just kind of want to go to the paralytic shellfish poisoning map, and they actually tell you where shellfish in these live and where you can eat from. And just kind of to observe all postings and where to call if you want to eat shellfish. Mm -hmm. And where not to go. So it sounds like it's more like if you go out and get your own shellfish or whatever. Yeah, if you're fishing, and because because these red tides actually aren't specifically color based, so it could be okay. completely clear, wow. normal, and you could go, oh wow, I see a bunch of oysters and clams, and you catch a bucket and mm -hmm. you go home, you try to. I think it's like you can cut the neck off, even though, oh yeah, right here. The clam neck removes much of the toxin, oh, but I the see. clam okay. could still contain hazardous okay. amounts of the toxin. Because I love mussels, but you know, I always buy them, and I'm assuming that. Yeah, the and it definitely says licensed place, because people, they know there's a lot of clams in these places, so they'll just go out there and cheaply get yeah, them, right, and then right. sell them. Yeah, right, that's what I mean, yeah. So that's kind of the danger. Yeah. And then I've included links okay. of where I got all of everything. If you want to read more, this mm -hmm. is the, the last picture I had. Okay, are you ready? Done? Yep.